The truth is, there's a purpose for your life. There's a plan for your life. And you have everything that you need, it's, it's inside of you. And you just have to discover it. And it's a continual journey. But once you know that God has a plan for your life and you discover it, nothing and no one, despite whatever you go through, is going to stop you because you know you got a plan. And you, you can't fail if you know that. So that's the truth. I'll die on that. My name is uh, George Gadsden. Uh, I am uh, an artist, um, former banker who became an artist. I was invited, fortunately, to do an ornament for the White House uh, back in 2008 for an ornament for the White House Christmas tree. So I could say that I actually have worked not just in South Florida, but in other parts of the country uh, as well. I'd like to say that I, I see myself and my work as a, a, a transformer in that my work is in public spaces where, you know, it adds to the aesthetics of a, the, an environment. Uh, for example, the uh, Urban League of Broward County, their new building that was built back in, I think, 2010, um, I was fortunate to had been given the opportunity to create a, a large size sculpture that's on their lawn. Um, and then of course, there's one on the side of the building, uh, the African American Research Library, when it was built, uh, there's only five institutions of its kind in the country similar to it. Um, and so having the opportunity to put a nice 12 foot bronze sculpture outside that tells the story of, of uh, African Americans and their quest for uh, success and, and business and education and what have you. Um, but then also, just in the last year, uh, two large-scale sculptures, uh, one at the school board building downtown, uh, Dr. Kathleen Wright, uh, who was the first African American uh, female to be elected to the school board. Uh, and so for Broward County, and so that sculpture uh, basically memorializes her. And then the Sankofa bird, which is a, an Adinkra symbol that's used by you know, folks in Africa and, and Ghana, uh, that Sankofa bird sort of represents looking back in the past and learning from the past so that you can plan for the future. Uh, my, one of my favorite quotes, uh, his, art, is proof that anything has ever happened in the past. So whenever I can be a part of creating art that tells the story and tells the history of African Americans and, and what we have contributed and what we have done in this country, uh, then I believe that history is not going to be lost. I actually grew up in a small town uh, in Central Florida, uh, Fort Meade, Florida. A population, I tell folks the population is 5,999 when I'm not there. Uh, <clears throat> I'm proud to say that we have two traffic lights today to give you a perspective of, uh, you know, really how small the town is. And, uh, you know, mostly in the black neighborhood, particularly, you know, most everybody knows everybody. Uh, and when I was growing up, my mom and dad, back then you didn't have to lock your doors because it was very safe and in the neighborhoods we lived in. But I sp specifically remember uh, this one day, my mother was ironing in the house and the door was not locked. And these guys, uh, white guys, drove up 
and their cars, and they just came in the house and just came through the house and went out the back door. Um, they were looking for something, but they got the wrong house. But the fact that they did that, and these were not police officers, um, you know, then at the same time, you know, growing up in the small town of Fort Meade, um, it was nothing on Friday nights or Saturday nights for the Ku Klux Klan to drive through my neighborhood with the hood light on in their vehicles and they were wearing the hoods to uh, instill fear in, uh, in people that lived in my neighborhood. So, uh, so that's what it was like. But growing up as a kid, we, we were forced enough to have parents that really um, stressed education and uh, they stressed that education is your ticket to freedom and once you get that nobody can take it away from you. Now in terms of being poor or not poor, I would say we, we weren't poor but we, we weren't raised with a silver spoon in our mouths and uh, our home was a home actually full of love and I'm proud to say uh, that I'm from Fort Meade and I'm proud of where I came from. My older brother, uh, Robert, <clears throat> is, was like my mentor. When we were growing up, you know, the schools were segregated, and once the schools were integrated, he was the first, of, of his graduating class, he was a salutatorium of this traditionally white school. So he uh, <clears throat> went to college, got to, uh, he, he, he graduated from Stetson, and so, looking to him as my mentor, if you will, I, uh, uh, he kind of told me the things I needed to do. So, I got my acceptance from Duke, and he said, by all means, go to Duke. Now, quite frankly, I had no clue. I knew of Stetson, but I had no clue about Duke, and, you know. But I was following his advice. And so, uh, that's how I ended up at Duke. My, you know, my dad, you know, did not graduate from college. Um, he, my dad taught me certain things, uh, the hard work, but in my life back then as a kid, I really did not have a male figure that I would, could look to as a successful business person. And so Robert, my brother, was that person from the business side. He, you know, despite all odds, he made it. And so, I, and that's why I tell folks today, you know, don't use the color of your skin. Don't use your economic status. Yeah, the reality is those things do exist. People will try to keep you from being who you are this destined to be. But you gotta believe in yourself. And, you know, but you gotta hook yourself though to someone who is successful and in business and, and, and successful in life. It doesn't necessarily have to be business, but someone who's doing things and making a difference and, and changing lives and influencing the people. So Robert was that person. When I was in college, you know, uh, at Duke University, back then, I think the population of African Americans was it was a very small percentage, and uh, Duke academically, some people may not know of the school, but academically, Duke is kind of up there with one as an Ivy League school. So um, it got difficult. You know, I, I was a straight A student in high school, but then when I get to college and I'm competing with kids whose parents sent them to boarding schools and. You know, parents, their parents were ambassadors of different countries, and these were wealthy kids. So here I am from small town Fort Meade, <clears throat> and then I'm in a classroom of 600, sometimes 1,000 students in one classroom, and I'm just a little dot, if you will. So the academic part of it got a little bit rigorous, and Kids were committing suicide during um, finals because it was just so tough. And uh, I remember
sorry. I remember calling my mother and uh, she said, son, you hang in there and uh, it's gonna be okay. And I remember making this statement to myself, the choice that I make today will impact my future. And my choice was not to give up. Despite how difficult it got, my choice was, I'm gonna stick this out. And I did. Um, and I've had people ask me, well, did you graduate magnum cum laude? <laughs> I said, nope, I graduated, thank you, laude. <laughs> but my grade point average was you know, almost a, a 3.7, I believe it was. Uh, so that was a moment in my life that I could have given up and just thrown in the towel because it was just too difficult. But uh, I said, nope, the choice I make today will impact my future and uh, my future, I'm not going to make the choice to give up. In high school, there was a program called the DCT, Diversify Cooperative Training. So it allowed me during the time I was in high school to work part time in the bank and also go to school. So uh, it was pretty, a pretty good deal. So I was learning a skill set in terms of business and uh, the whole uh, profession of banking while I was in high school. You know, went to college in North Carolina at Duke University. I would come home during the summer and I always had a job. So when I graduated, I said, okay, I happened to know the president of the holding company and I told Mr. White was his name, uh, Jim White was his name actually. And I said, you know, I'm graduated from college and I'm home uh, and looking for employment. And I got a job working full time in the bank. Uh, and I have to say that, that my transition was a gradual transition because as a banker back in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, I was the only person of color in management. And because of that, I was like a fish in a fishbowl, constantly always eyes out on me, uh, which was fine. I, I didn't have a problem with performing, but when you know someone's always watching you, there's that stress factor. So as a result of that, I, I said, I, I started breaking out in hives. And, I, and I, needed, I said, I need a hobby, something to get away from this stress. So I enrolled in an art class on the weekend uh, from 9 to 12 at Hillsborough Community College with senior citizens to relax, to learn how to paint. And I fell in love with it. And that was the transition. It, there was something that just happened. I said, you know what, as with anything, if you focus and you commit it to, to it, uh, you can get better at it. So I committed to getting better at being an artist. And so I still was in banking, uh, made the transition from Tampa to South Florida to Miami, and was doing it as a hobby. And eventually saw that there's an opportunity here for me to really make this a business. And eventually, kind of start making a name for myself. Um, the, the, I think the pivotal moment in my life was when in 1995, when we hosted the South Florida Super Bowl, uh, I heard that the South Florida Super Bowl was looking for a gift to give to the NFL team owners. And so hence I created a prototype uh, sculpture of a kicker and presented it back to the South Florida Super Bowl host committee and they actually loved it. So that sculpture was done, reproduced in bronze in limited edition. It was actually given to all the NFL team owners. And my name and newspaper article on the front page of the sun said, no, artist carved something into the bronze age. And that's really when it kind of catapulted, if you will, to uh, another level. And I was able to, uh, leverage that opportunity for the next Super Bowl uh, in Super Bowl 33 in 1999 to do another sculpture. So I figured, why, why not put it out there? So I did, and so in 1995, the first one was a kicker. 1999, the, the quarterback, that was also given to all the NFL team owners and some of the VIP sponsors. 
And so that was my transition. And then from there, I've been um, just doing art and changing lives and changing communities. If I could go back in time and give myself some advice, if I, if I could change the word from advice to say, if I could give myself a truth, A truth is this, before I was ever born, my purpose and my destiny was already designed. And when I was born, all the ingredients for me to succeed were already inside of me. I just need to know that from the very day I was born, and all I need to do now is just to pursue it vigorously with no fear and with purpose and resolute to not stop until it's accomplished. I'll never forget someone told the story of this person wanting to help the butterfly come out of the cocoon, and when they did, it was, the butterfly wasn't fully strong because it was through the stress of coming out of that cocoon that allows for the wings to, uh, there are certain secretions that's on the wings that has to come off, but the wings form strength. And as it's going through that cocoon, in the right process, the wings are now strong and able to fly. But if that process, if somebody helps the, uh, the butterfly come out of that cocoon without going through that process, the wings are not as strong as they need to be to fly. So the truth is, looking back, and this is why I tell kids, adults, there's a purpose for your life. There's a plan for your life. And you have everything that you need, it's, it's inside of you and you just have to discover it. And it's a continual journey. But once you know that God has a plan for your life and you discover it, nothing and no one, despite whatever you go through, is gonna stop you because you know you got a plan and you, you can't fail if you know that. So that's the truth. I'll die on that. <laughs>